right, so I'm back out here in the garage and I've been working with the digital in and outs. There you can see the code there. So M64, that's turn on, and P is the output, turn on digital output, one, zero, but one is zero in most machine or most computer languages. So there you go, that's the code itself. And you can see right above it, that's the turn off command. So if I hit enter, make sure this is highlighted. And when I hit enter, you'll see this guy flip on. And then if I come back up here, select the one above it, which is the off command. And you can just type these directly into MDI. I just had them because I was playing around with it earlier. Then if I hit enter on this guy, see it clicks off. Now this is nice because this lets me know that Linux CNC has enough power to flip one of those little relays. Um, and it gives me the ability to do some kind of kind of cool stuff with it. So then the next thing I've been working on is subroutines. So if I go here, here you can see I have uh, call subroutines, and I will be making a video on how to do those um, shortly. They're pretty cool. So right here I have kind of a tool change subroutine for like a wine, a wine rack style tool changer. So if I hit start, ah yes, now we're moving. Really slow, I'm wondering if I, nope, there we go. And it's running the subroutine now. It pauses to let the non-existent power draw bar draw in the tool. And I think that was, yeah, that was a remove tool. So now it just came down as if it were going to pick up a tool. Come out slowly and wrap it up. Now, since I don't have the uh, the little window or dialog box removed yet, because this is just the concept, this will keep popping up, so I just have to keep hitting enter. And then we're going again. We're putting away a tool this time. And of course, allowing that time to remove and pick up the tool, so it's letting the tool be threaded in and out. All right, so I'm going to stop myself right there. It was a little bit long-winded, and so with the actual tool changer, so this is it in Fusion 360, and it's just running on a kaleidoscope, so this would be just, you know, steel that you can buy from, like, Home Depot, and... Again, I'm thinking I'm going to have to go with the plastic for these, either Delron or PVC, just to give them the flexibility to, to pull in and out the tool. And I don't have this animated, so I'm just going to manually move it out. So that's what it would be like, except I'd have the tool. So that's what it would be like. So it'd be hanging off that one side of the mill, and then I'd say, okay, let's go have a little pneumatic solenoid over here and have that digital out going to that solenoid and then up oh, your tools are on the table now or above the table which is where I want it to be because I might have a vice or something on the table so then they'd shoot out and then you'd have your pick of what tool you want so this is coming along the x-axis inside the mill itself the one issue I can see with that is because we have clearance issues with the mill on either side I might only be able to do one of these so one one side I should say so I might only have the side where this tools on because of clearance issues but if I lever this and put it on the lever I can get twice the distance you know a, a, a one to two lever I can get twice the distance um, with double the pressure so I would have to either consider a, 
uh, a tougher or a stronger air pressure or feed it more uh, PSI. I think this one can hold up to 200. I don't know. This is just one off McMaster car that I downloaded just as a proof of concept. Um, and then add, since I'm getting more length, then add more tools. So instead of having just three, you might end up with five or six. So, yeah, this is a real simple way, real easy way to run a tool changer on Linux CNC. And I've yet to see someone implement, uh, you know, this kind of a tool changer. Now, I've seen wine rack style tool changers before, uh, but not to this complex nature uh, where you can hold way more tools. So, and then I think this is a two-way one. I don't know. This one might not be, this this particular uh, air cylinder might not be the one I go with. Uh, but if it's a two-way one, then you just have, okay, pneumatic in, pneumatic out, you know, and then do it all in one cycle and then put it in the subroutine itself. That way you've got it. It's all in one place. Unload, load, you know, real simple, real, real easy. Um, I haven't seen anybody do it, and it saves the A axis. A lot of the issues I see with, with tool changers is they're running macros or, or subroutines to, to move and get the tools themselves, but they sacrifice their a axis and i don't like that i i want to have an a axis and i know that you can set up linux cnc with five axes in fact the servo um yeah the the maso mesa mesa it's mesa or is it mesa i'm going to blurt that out on the screen there the spelling cuz i keep forgetting what it is um has controllers up to six axes so i'd be more fine doing that except linux cnc once you go beyond the fourth axis then it, it needs to know what it's doing with that is that the spindle that's moving how is the spindle moving and there's a huge huge document on just running uh five axis on linux cnc and i don't think it's worth the time you know one of these days i might make myself a you know a machine with more than more than four axes but for now this works it's quick dirty and I like it and I think I could do it from what I saw I think I can do it not including the angle iron or anything for about a hundred bucks so not bad oh or the uh, the Daldrin that I'd be using here I, I didn't include that as well because I haven't looked any up any quotes on it so anyways Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like. If you didn't enjoy this video, uh, you're free to drop a dislike. I don't really care. But anyways, I will see you all in the next video.